Hi everyone, thanks so much for coming through to this tutorial today. We'll be painting with acrylics and we're going to have a go at this really fun, bright, colourful, loose parrot painting. Um, so if you're new to painting, this is totally appropriate for beginners. You can buy the kit or you can just get the equipment yourself. Maybe you've even bought some things already. Now this is a 12 by 12 inch canvas. This will come in the painting kit. If you're in the UK, they're available. Um, I will always make sure the outline is drawn for you so you don't need to worry about drawing skills. Um, you'll have palettes, paper palettes in your pack. You'll have all the brushes. I'll tell you them as we use them. You, all you need to provide is some water to wash your brushes in and maybe a bit of paper towel to have on the side. Um, I always also have an old rag on my lap so I can just brush off um, any excess colour or water off my brushes as I go. Okay, so um, we have the outline done and um basically i just get started painting so i want to make sure I, I let you know that i haven't practiced this i don't practice these the main reason being because i think you should see my thought process um, i always say this at the beginning of videos for any newbies so that you know you can see that i'm making decisions as i go um it's not like a polished step one step two type lesson okay it's just going to be me painting making decisions because i think that's how you learn to then go off and do it on your own um i am going to be making available this uh booklet acrylic painting basics so there's everything in here just to get you started so all the paints i have um are slightly different to maybe what you might get on the shelf so i also link below in the description um the equivalent names of paints so that you can go out and buy your own if that's what you want to do or if you have paints at home you can choose the right ones okay let's get started excuse me that was a big yawn i can't be yawning already I've only just started okay also might what you might want to have either a heat tool or a hair dryer so if we dry in between layers you have something to hand to dry i do recommend you watch the whole video through so that you have an idea of where we're going and um it's much easier than when you come to do it yourself you can stop and start and you know what to expect um i'm gonna go with first of all from your kit i think i'm gonna leave the background white to be honest i'm gonna keep that white I, i'm not really interested in doing any color on that until the end and i'm just going to do like splashes of paint at the end um we're just going to focus on the bird first now um yeah we'll go for the angle brush i think i do love the angle brush so in your set you'll have a brush like this obviously mine's nice and mucky and well used it's got a slight angle on the top top so this is your angle brush make sure you've got lots of water on it See, mine is a well-used one and you can see how they're separating. So if I wanted to do a nice clean line, I wouldn't be able to do that. The trouble is I use mine so much, that happens. And these are student grade brushes, so they won't last forever, but they'll certainly last for a few paintings. Okay, can you, can you see? They're all like that on mine. So I'm going to go possibly to one of my own angle brushes. You'll just use the one in your kit see if i can find one that i want to use of my own so yours will come and you'll have the nice can you see now there's no breaks there's a nice line there that's what yours will come like to start with okay so um i'm gonna move i think what we need to do actually is get a rubber because although the design is there we can see it uh we don't want to see it too much especially when we're going to be using use the wrong thing we're going to be using different light possibly lighter colors so what can help is this putty eraser so that helps to just lift some of it up mm, it's only lifting a little bit up but that's fine it's better than nothing maybe it wasn't that bad not as bad as i thought okay so just do that first lift up any of the pencil that you feel you need or want to right today we're going to get started with i think i'm going to go in for the i feel like i want to go in for the beak and kind of work my way that way and then come and do the wing so let's do that that one's really empty that white let's get this one so i'm going to put some white out you'll get that if you buy the kit you'll get some 
it's your get little pots of paint and I would have put enough in for you to do the painting and probably a bit more so it's titanium white now we're going to mix that in with a little bit of I think we're going to go for medium yellow okay we're also going to get some um called cyan blue and the equivalent for cyan blue is phthalo blue and the medium yellow is um medium yellow cadmium medium yellow hang on doesn't want to come out probably haven't put the lid on properly let me just get a poker tool there we go okay so we're going to need probably quite a bit of the blue and yellow as you can see in the picture we'll probably need some red in a minute as well but i want us to just start off on the beak so to start with coming from here we've got like white very it's it's a very like pale blue mixed in with the light mixed in with the white we don't want too much blue and then we'll just keep adding the white until we feel we've got a nice pale version of that blue that blue is lovely as it is so you don't need to put any other colors in to alter that blue just the white okay we've got a nice light color now so we're going to come down here okay just this bit here and it will make sense as we go along in the painting because we're here we're trying to create i think i'm just going to come in with some white straight on there and really lighten it so you can mix on canvas as well that's better um i can't remember what i was saying often when you see white on the painting on the original it's not just white there's lots of other colors involved in creating the effect of light and dark and white often absorbs a lot of the colour around it. Now what I'm doing is I'm getting a bit of that darker blue. And just kind of blending it up like that to add the blue in that's at the bottom. Alright, now what we need to do before we come in with the white and the yellow now. I'm just going to bring some more of that down here. With some more white. I need that top bit to be lighter. Just needed a bit more of it there. Okay, we're going to just... Give that a dry. Once it's dry, you can really see where you need to go back in and layer up again if the colour hasn't quite covered in the way that you wanted. So we're going to come around here and bring that down. I want some more white with that blue. A bit more. You can see as well, I'm just mixing small amounts of paint. I don't really want to be mixing too many big piles of paint and then you just don't need it. You just mix with a little bit, use as we go. Okay. So now we're going to work on the rest of the beak. We want a little bit of yellow and then we want to drag out some of that white to the yellow. We want it very pale. It's going to be mostly white with uh, just a little bit of yellow mixed in. So we're going to come down from up here with it and here and again up here. Okay, so I'm adding quite a bit of the yellow in and then again I'm going to bring down some of my white. It doesn't matter if you get a bit of blue on there because it's all going to mix in anyway. All right, and then bring it down like that. There we go. Then what I want to do is come in with mainly white and bring lots of that white into it here. Okay. Just bringing the white into that yellow. 
and also into the blue a little bit to kind of blend it together a little bit okay we need to have a little bit that's coming a bit further down remember we're not also being exact to the picture okay it's this is a really a really fun colorful painting it doesn't need to be perfect to the picture now what we'll do is we'll come in with some white on that when that's dry let's do that Now I'm just going to get pure white on my brush and we're going to bring some of that in and we're kind of going to be a bit more strokey about it. We want some of those strokes to come into it and really give it some nice, so it actually looks painted, you know, we don't want a, sm a smooth flat surface. Then we'll come in with the blue again and add in more of the blue here, that lighter blue. Just going to use a bit of spray on my here and bring it down there we go it's looking better there and we don't really need to do any more than that for now because we can um come back we're only doing our first layer we're just kind of saying what's happening on you know where everything is and giving it space so that's the first part um done of the beak okay so we're gonna come in with some red now for this we need scarlet red to start with because it is very red there we go Remember, we're just mapping out the main colours right now. And I'm going to stay with my angle brush because it will help me to get into some of the corners that I need to get into. We're just literally laying down plain red because we're mapping out where the colours are. OK, and it might seem a bit shocking to start with. Like, oh, it's very strong. Red is very strong colour, so it can be overpowering. Um, but we'll come in with some other shades of the red, which will help to make it feel a little bit um, less kind of in your face. <laughs> um, so we've got some blue up here, so I'm going to come around here and do some red. Remember, we don't have to do it exactly like the picture, but I'm going to try and stick to it a little bit. Once we've got the main colours mapped out, we can start being a bit more freer with it. And then we've got some more red kind of coming down here. So I'm going to map some of that in. I need some more water on my brush. If you find that your, your paint isn't going down very well, it might be that you need some water on your brush. Okay. So I'm going to come in with the red and I'm just going to patch in some of the red where I can see some red. What we'll do is we'll come in and start to lay down other colours over the top and that will help to bring it to life but to start with this is just a case of mapping out some of those I think that's all kind of just coming out like that isn't it like little fiery fiery bits like that and like that and then it kind of goes up here so that's all we're doing just laying down the first layer, putting some colours down. We need to make an orange, so I'm just going to bring a little bit of yellow over, mix in some red, mix in the yellow. I did put too much red in, remember I said it's overpowering and I always do it. I still always do it. <laughs> there we go, we've made a nice orange there. And we're going to blend that in a little bit in between these fiery strokes. Okay, I'm just going to come round to give that shape there, 
I'll just tidy it up a bit. And as we come out this way, we'll start to get a bit lighter. So we need some more yellow. I'm literally just going to come here and start grabbing the yellow. I'm going to kind of let the, the yellow mix. And here we can just lay down any kind of patterns with the brush. And I'm just letting the colours kind of create their own feel. Need a bit more yellow. Their own mix as they come through. Um, so we need, I think that's kind of a bit blue there. I don't want to come right down there. There we go. So we've already got that lovely fiery orange coming through, but it's mixed in because we've got some red with it. We've got the yellow. It's all mixing in lovely and creating that fiery effect, which is what we want. Now we want really some pure yellow here to get as much of that yellow in as possible. And I'm just moving my brush around to create these different marks because it doesn't need to be perfect. And we've already kind of got some structure there of where the feathers are coming from. And then they come out and you get all these feathery shapes. But how simple was that? Just using our brush and mixing the colours as we go. Um, we don't want to make it more difficult than it needs to be. Just cleaning the brush off again. And we just want to pick up some of the red, I think. There's a little bit. There's some ready orangey marks here. There's another one up here. Because then we're going to come in with some blue again. Might just put some red marks here as if to say yep yeah, there's a little bit of red sneaking in here as well some red and some orange just a little bit because it won't just be one set of color coming through on the feathers there'll be all sorts of different colors popping through but we can go over and add these colors later as well so it's all good <clears throat> there is quite a strong bit of red here and really, I'm being really loose because, you know, at the end of the day, it is a creature and um, nothing is perfect. You know, it's it's a wild animal and the feathers will be all over the place. Right. We need some green now. Now, I do have quite a nice green for this. this it's a mid green. but It's quite vibrant and I think really good for parrot feathers. So let's give that a, a whirl. I think it needs to be a bit more yellowy at some point. So let's go for the green with a little bit of the yellow in. A bit more of the yellow. It's the medium yellow and this is mid green. So they'll all be in your packs. And we're kind of just going to come sweeping down here like that. Need more water and more paint. We're going to get the canvas covered. We just don't want white showing through from our canvas we want to get it really covered now i'm not worrying too much about where i'm putting it or just just getting that color paint down that's what we need and we need it to be coming from we do need it to be coming from this direction because we're kind of showing how the face is leaning that way and um the feathers will be coming from that way and once we've got all this laid out, we can then start to join in the feathers so it looks like they're flowing into each other. But at the moment, we're just mapping out the colour. OK, so don't worry too much. I think they're a bit darker over this side. So I'm coming with a slightly darker green. It's a little bit transparent, this green, so it may feel like it's a bit see-through. But it will be covering. Need some more yellow. I want a more yellowy green. Much more yellowy. Keep adding it till we get there. There we go. Still not quite right. Just a little bit more. That's better. We're getting there in the end. Right. And come around. Okay, and then that will lead into 
the blue um, I won't put any green down here actually I think we'll just do all the blue and then we can come in and put the nice bright colors on top afterwards so let's get started with that I think this might be a quicker painting than I thought it was going to be which is good because when you're learning it's easy to get tired quickly so I'm going to make up quite a bit of that blue so we'll need a lot of white I want the darker blue first because then we can come on with the lighter blue after so I'm just going to come around here with that darker blue and I'm literally going to paint it all in blue okay I'm going to get rid of that white canvas and I'm only patch coloring it so what I mean by that is I'm just putting the brush down and just kind of doing it like that so it's got a bit of texture we're probably not going to see much of it in a minute anyway okay once we've got <clears throat> I actually think it needs to be darker than that yeah we need to be coming in maybe with that straight cobalt um straight cyan blue yeah we do um so i'm just going to create a wing with that color we didn't really need any white because we need the bottom to be as dark as possible so that we can come up on other layers and lighten it up so let's do that see i did told you told you I paint as I go and you learn from whatever decisions I'm making um, we can go over that red a bit because we can come back into that afterwards it's fine it's quite nice to have those different colors underneath I think I need some more water on my brush you don't want too much water but you want the paint to be moving and it won't move if your brush is dry and the canvas is dry as well so make sure you do that I want to get a little bit of black out because I need to darken. I can see that some areas I need to darken. We may have to come out with a second palette. We'll see. Oop, did not need that much. <laughs> this always happens with my big tubes. Right. So I'm going to come in with some black down here because it's dark, but still with a blue on my brush, so that in a minute I can mix that blue in. Can you see there? There's a slight hue of blue at the top. All right, because in a minute, you'll see here, I'm just going to come in with some black here and there as well. That might show through. Let's darken it up a bit more. That's fine. Right, so now we'll dry. <clears throat> now remember, every painting has an ugly stage. We're right in the middle of the ugly stage, so keep with it. Oh, I'm having so much fun. Honestly, if you're not painting yet and you're just watching, you're going to really enjoy this. Okay, so coming in <clears throat> with some white. And we're going to come over the top here. And we're just going to start basically lightening up areas <clears throat> of the wing. So those that we've done the top of the wing like that. And now we're just going to come and kind of create some wing feathery marks coming down that way paint strokes nice broad paint strokes that's what they've done um, on this reference image and i think that's fine just come down water on your brush make sure it's nice and flowy So as you can see now, we're getting rid of the dark and we're coming lighter. I may even get even lighter in a bit. So what I'm doing is I'm moving my brush and kind of twisting it at the end, which gives us a little bit of a point. But we want to be coming in that direction. <coughs> Excuse me, my voice seems to be getting a bit croaky. Okay. 
So again, use the shape of the brush to come down and just create some feathery shapes. And that's it really. It's um, nice and simple. Put a little bit of blue around here as well on the top of there. I'm happy with that. Good. And then we're going to come in and make an even lighter blue. Bit more. Okay, and then we can come on and just kind of splurge some. We're kind of creating depth, so we're just going to come on and create some nice big lines again of an even lighter blue. Yeah, doesn't matter where you put them, just pop them down, but make sure you're going in that direction because then it builds up the feel of the feathers. And use the shape of your brush. It's got that nice point on it, so yeah, do that too. And then we'll come in and we'll add in the colours. I said I was going to do the wing last, didn't I? Which shows that as I move around, I change my mind. Try not to have them in straight lines. <laughs> Try to make sure you're dotting them all over the place. I was going a bit straight liney then, which is easy to do when your brain is focusing on something else and you're not concentrating. You go into the subconscious, which which likes straight lines. It just does. I'm going to give it a dry because I want to come in with the colours on the top. Let's bring this wing to life. Right, we're going to come in with a bit of magenta now. I'm going to put that in the middle there because we're running out of space. Spacey, spacey. I'm having a problem with my paint drying out. Probably because I'm oh, not, not closing them properly. Right, okay. We want some magenta. So I want to come, start coming in with some of the magenta here. Oh, there's a bit of a blue blob there. I don't know why that's there. But hey, I kind of like it. So happy accidents and all that. We'll let it dry there. Um, yeah, so we're just going to come in with some purple here. Just some little bits. Kind of create an effect of kind of a shade of bluey purpley colour. There's a bit of a purple up here and there's a bit up here. And I'm just laying that down because when we come and put the blue in up there, at least there's something there. Um, we can come in with the magenta as well with the magenta and the red and kind of just give it a bit of a variant so it's not bright red a little bit of a variation in color but again we'll sort that out in the when we do the final detail but there's no harm in just adding some on now um and i think i'd like some up here as well some here And you can't really see that on the screen much, but you can, you will be able to in the painting. Now it's quite a transparent colour, so you can add a bit of white, which will help to give it a bit of opaqueness. But you can just layer it up, it's fine. And we're just adding it in where we feel like adding it in. Where do you want to put it? Put it where you want to put it. We're just having fun. Might now put some green and yellow on that blue. So we can come in with this and just go. So wherever we have feathers, just kind of add that in a bit. As though it's joining in with the featherlessness. Remember, all paintings have an ugly stage. And as I've said, we're right thick in it. So just enjoy it. It will come together in the end. Okay, now I'm just going to go over that green again, making sure we've got some of that covered. Now I'm going to come in with the blue again. <laughs> Told you we'd need a lot of blue. So I'm going to come in with a slightly darker blue and then we'll relighten it again to, right, just to kind of come in and it's nice if we get like the different shades of blue coming in in one stroke so pick up some of the blue some of the white and then kind of just it creates its own 
nice little gradients of colour. Um, that's that bit coming out of there. And then we've got some straight bits here. Um, coming up and coming into that orange bit and then we're coming across don't worry about going into the other colors because we can tidy it up later we're just getting a feel for this magnificent animal and all its beauty of color and just having fun with it not worrying too much about what we're putting where as long as you're going in that general direction and creating that nice feathery feel you can't go wrong um, get quite a bit of paint on like I did then if you can we want these to be really nice and vibrant and saying hey look we're feathers we're sticking up okay I'm just using the brush again to come in between the feathers we already have and kind of create that feel of them coming back from its from its face wait till we get the eye in the eye always finishes it off really nicely as well on any animal okay And we'll come up here, we'll just kind of smudge that into the orange and yellow that we already have. Don't worry, we're going to be coming back. Remember, we're just going layers. You can't get it, you can't get all the detail you want on your first pass. <clears throat> the first pass I call the first layer. You just can't, it's not going to happen. So don't worry it will just look like a flat color for now but in a minute like the wing it will be <clears throat> more detailed and more 3d like right just coming in and making a bit more of this green because we've missed some bits i think i might lighten it with a white as well yeah that's nice a bit more yellow so the white just helps to lighten it and the yellow helps to make it more of a yellowier green. We need more yellow. It's not yellowy enough. We need a yellow green there. I just feel as though that's what we need. Too much paint on my brush. Be careful, otherwise it will just become like a, f a blobby feel. Um, if there's too much paint on your brush. And just let that kind of flow in, flicking flow into the other colors and you might pick up some of the blue along the way that's absolutely fine because some of the feathers will be bluey green um on the real creature they'll be mixing in a bit won't they so it's fine okay so you should now have <clears throat> that top part done um basic layer of blue we need to come in here with the blue actually do some of the green we'll block in the rest of the mouth mouth and the eye and then we can start to do the final layers. All right, we can come on and just have fun with lightning and putting the highlights in. That's the final bit, the <clears throat> highlights are fun. I'm so sorry, my voice is a bit off today. I don't know why. My voice often goes when I'm tired, so maybe I'm just a bit tired today. Who knows? Right. So now I'm coming in with another slightly lighter blue and actually I am going to come in here with some of the blue as well. <clears throat> that needs to be really dark blue in there, so we'll sort that in a minute. Um, but we do want some light bits, so now what I'm going to do again is kind of just come in and now we're just flicking out with that lighter blue, maybe a bit lighter still. We will come and put another layer on. We're kind of building layers. I'm not doing it exactly like the picture. I want to kind of 
build layers up of these different vibrant colors so it looks like feathers see that's mixed in with the green a bit I like that it's kind of created another color so we're just putting these feathery lines in we're flicking back from the head and then we're kind of just going to be twisting it round different ways so cross cross them can you see what i'm doing i'm crossing them a bit so it's not all perfect crisscross them over and make sure you've got a lot of brush a lot of paint on your brush so that by the time you get to the end of that stroke there is still some paint on your brush okay and we need some of these marks to be shorter you don't always get feathers that are really long like that but again by going in the right the direction that we need we're creating the movement we need for the parrot so just do that go in that direction remember we're going to keep the background white but we'll put some splashes on at the end which is going to be great fun i always love splashes <laughs> If you come on here, you'll know I just love adding splashes to everything. I can't help it. I just like it. Okay. Where else is there some blue? I think we might be okay. Right, so there is obviously blue on the mouth here, but it's quite dark. So let's just mix in and make a nice dark blue. All I've done is a little bit of black and a little bit of blue to create this kind of different blue like a darker version okay so that's coming down but the rim of the beak there the bottom of the beak is lighter than the rest of it <clears throat> and then i'm going to come in with the black and just create a couple of lines there on the beak okay so far we only use the angle brush and that's all we've needed so far and that's fine um i usually paint nearly everything with angle brushes just because i enjoy using them but you can swap around with the other brushes that are in your pack um the inside of the mouth we're gonna have to make that dark so i'm gonna come in with black first and we will maybe come in with another color towards the end but we just need to get that dark color down first and then we can fill it in oh excuse me um fill it in afterwards i think it might be hay fever you know my throat today so i'm feeling a bit sniffy as well hopefully it's not a cold yeah so they are very dark and we've got another dark bit here coming through i want some blue in it i don't want it completely black and it's this bit here okay make sure you've got enough paint on your brush you can see it's like the color of the beak but it's a bit darker because i've added that color but i've then added black and we're going to come up here and kind of join in with the feathers again with the flicky motion okay need a little bit more water need a bit more of that color so we're using the darker blue up here that we had and mixing it in with the black right round we come don't forget we'll come in and tidy it all up after this is just our first layer so at the moment that bit's looking really dark but it needs to be because that's where the shadow is but hopefully you'll start to see how it's coming together a bit so then we need to come on with this blue but be a bit lighter and come here and here lighten up those bits so we want those black stripes in there but we don't want them too you know too obvious we want them mixed in just blend that in a bit i will come in and dry it in a minute so we can i think i'll dry it now actually Thank you. 
now i've got some ultramarine blue which is slightly different when you mix it with magenta it makes a really nice purple so you might use that hang on let me get some out there we go just a little bit okay so i'm going to mix some magenta we're going to go off here a bit can't see it very well but and we're just mixing a bit of purple and i like the effect of magenta and ultramarine blue together makes a really nice purple because there actually is purple in here too so we're just going to add some of that in oh, i think my brush is a bit too watery let's dry it off and just clean it and dry it first let's just get that excess water off right let's try again What I think I'll do actually is put some here as well on the beak. It helps just to give it a bit of vibrancy. Might need to be a bit lighter. A lighter purple. So we add a little bit of white to lighten. We create a tint. There we go. Yeah, like that. Not like that on the picture, but again, as I said, I'm just kind of freestyling. Doing what I want to do as well. Okay, and that's helped to create the shape of the beak a little bit. We've come a bit too far over, so it doesn't quite look right. So we need to come back in with the dark. Almost black in that one, wasn't it? That needs to be bigger. And swing around more like that. Because those little differences, they do make a difference. That's better. Okay, and um, we need to come in and put some more pure black in here. And we need some more pure black in here as well, because it's very dark in these shadows. And also under here. Just using that corner to come in and create. May as well go all the way around actually, because there is shadow there all the way around. But it does come up underneath the feathers so draw it like that use the point of your brush as though it's coming up and creating shadow under those feathers can you see just that simple little movement has helped to create the effect of the shadow come along nicely now what i think i'm going to put some black in here as well which will also help to create some shadow effect can you see how that now has helped i wasn't dark enough underneath so um, if we add that in now that will help create the shadow have a couple of little bits here here that's fine um, we do need some darker blue shadow effects now we've got here there's um darker bit here and we need some more water on the brush i think we need more blue there i think like a bluey black is what we're looking for really that was a bit too black um and we just kind of want to dot some bits of this in like that kind of just flicking but not not too much and then here Definitely need some darker bits coming down here on its neck and it's really dark here. Now I'll put that orange and purple in there. We'll see. Like I said, we can go over it when we're coming back and perfecting all the different stages. We can come back and make it more how we want it. I think a little bit of black in there as well. I'm just literally touching a little bit of black. OK, and that black helps to really make it pop because we're putting those shadows in. um i'm just kind of dotting that dotting it about and just not worrying too much about um the exact shape or anything just making sure that we've got that shadow in there that's nice and then we've created the top of that um 
top of the wing as well right i'm just getting some pure blue whilst i've still got some black on there just to kind of create this down here it's black but when you're up close there's a shimmer of blue i don't know if you can see it no you can't but there is there's blue in there so that's nice um, I'm going to come in with some darker blue bits in here as well. So we're just going to come in here and create some little lines where we've got some darker bits, maybe underneath. Can you see how that's already just kind of made a difference? Makes it a bit more realistic to have little flashes of colour here and there. Um, again, I think I'll come down here and add some more of the direct blue colour um, it's your painting remember so you do it how you want to do it we've got that flash of red in there we're not, we haven't finished it off since we put it on have we I've just realised so let's sort that out I'm jumping around a bit now because I want to kind of finish off most of the outside of the bird um, and then kind of just finish off with the eye because i think that'll be fun and i'm just adding some more of the red um, but when you put it on the blue as you can see it's darker and um, just trying to create a bit of color in that wing in different places so it doesn't just look like oh there's a red blob in the middle um so i think that's fine not too keen on that red in the middle even though it's on the original one I don't like it, so I might try and just cover it up a bit. That's better. Let that dry and then we can make it into something. This is why I say, you know, I uh, make it up as I go along. Sometimes I don't like what I've got. So what we need to do here is just get rid of that mess. I don't like it. I don't like the colours. So this is to show you how to put things right when you don't like them. A little bit of shadow there with that dark blue. Right, uh, yeah, let's think about what we're going to do here. So I'm going to come in with the darker again. I'm just going to try and bring that back now with some more of the blue good and so we were going in that direction weren't we and i am now just going to come over and get rid of what was there but it's nice to have those colors underneath because then that creates um that bit of movement now we need to darken it up a little bit because we don't just want those random blue marks there there we go okay so now we've just got a really nice colorful wing and there's lots of feathery marks on now back here i think we'll just we're not going to worry too much about this bit okay and we'll come in with some mainly mainly that blue we need a bit of shadow underneath so again i'm going to come in and get some of that darker one and that will help to create the wing shape and we'll have the shadow under there as well and that's coming into its back Okay, yeah, happy with that. Maybe a bit darker still underneath. So we add a little bit more black. And we just pull, drag and pull from, from where the wing is. So it's coming in that direction. Okay. And I I think what we need to do is actually bring the wing down a bit because I don't think it would be 
quite that, that shape just add some more here don't forget we've got highlights to come as well in a minute as well this just kind of blends that into the background I'm not too worried about what's going on over there and we'll just get some of that lighter because that helps to create a bit of shadow there a bit of highlight but we will come and do highlights at the end right up to the top this is where we need to come in with some really light blue so mostly white and we're going to finish the top and do all the lovely highlights like i say mostly white so make sure it's mostly white if it's not then get it changed keep looking back from your picture stand back do you like where you're putting the strokes do you not and adapt as you go i'm going to come in with just some of that white now while there's a bit of blue on my brush to make it really light and get some of that white at the front there can you see we still need to finish off all this area as well let's get some nice fun white strokes in here remember we're just flicking with the brush and we're just adding in some final highlights to our little parrot's head i think we need to just bring a few more in here maybe just feel as though it kind of had a dent there we lost the shape of his head perfect now come in with the white and we want some pure white so really clean your brush off make sure there's nothing on it pure white not too much on your brush and flick and give them a bit of a curl these are the highlights that really help to make a difference right we need some of this purple really light and we're going to do kind of a bit of purple in here it's not perfect white it's like a purpley white and this will help to just give that eye area a bit of color but not too much so that we know that that's that's white and we can come over the top of the purple color and make it white as well we'll come in with the point to kind of create that shape and then up there is all kind of white as well lilac-y white <laughs> so i'm just going to go around the eye area and we're just blobbing it now because we want it to be like feathery we don't really want any perfect strokes around there so just blob it in and here especially we kind of just want some little strokey marks there and some little strokey marks here and i'm going to come around with the same color around here and while we've got this brush we just get into those points now we'll come to a finer detail brush i always come to the finer detail brush the small brush at the end to get into the little nooks and crannies i would say we need it now to get around the eye so you'll need the little round brush I wouldn't go for the littlest just yet, go for the next size up. Okay, and we're going to go for, it's like the navy blue that we made. I kind of like that colour. And then some white. Perfect, and we're going to just come round like that. We use the brush to create that nice little swirl and come around here make sure there's enough paint on your brush to actually get the paint on the canvas
a bit more bluey. So I'm just making a lilac now. Sorry, my brain switched off for a minute there. But it's like a more blue lilac and coming around here. And a little bit here. And I'm kind of just swirling it round just so that that colour isn't just the only colour there. Um, a bit more on it. So this is the bit where we come in and we can use the little brush to make these little details. So now I'm just creating these little feathery marks there. But let's get the eye done. Let's get it done. And then we can start to finish everything off with our detail. And I say finish everything off, but that can still take a lot of time. Because we're going in and we're making it how we want it to be. Okay, now you can start to see it looks more like a parrot. Let's give it a dry. Okay, so I'm going to come in with the white and just create more of a white in its eye. That's better. And then come around with the purpley colour again and then we're just going to soften this area a little bit. That's nice. And then just kind of bring that down a little bit. And then that comes that way a little bit. And then we want this coming that way a little bit. It helps to soften the eye and just give it a bit of general direction as well. So coming into this nice, not the very, very pale purple, but that slightly darker purple. And we're going to come here and also just kind of flick, flick up just to create here more of a finished look where all that red is. But we've got that little bit of light colour also peeping through. Make sure there's enough water and enough paint on your brush, otherwise it won't do what you want it to do. But I am just kind of smudging that in. And then I'll come and create a few feathery looks there. And we'll do the same here. I almost feel like I need a little bit of grey in places. So just a bit of black, a bit of grey. Sorry, a bit of black, a bit of white. I've got some of the purple in there and that's fine. Um, just need to make sure it's as light as I want it. So keep adding white until it's pale. And don't stop. I'm running out of room, but it's okay because we've got that nice little brush. If I go quiet at times, it's because uh, I'm just concentrating. I think we need to just lighten it a bit more and then what we'll do is we'll come in with white on here and actually really give it some punch when you come in with the white highlights at the end you'll see what I mean so we've got some shadow here just wiggle it on because <clears throat> as I've said it's an animal and nothing is perfect when there's it's an animal um, we need another bit of red there, which we've missed. I don't think it was essential, but um, just helps to make it real. Like, oh, there's a patch of red fur here. Make sure it is patchy. Not a perfect round dot, because it won't be. Um, 
So we've got that purple. I think I'm going to make like a dark purple. So we want the um, ultramarine and the um, magenta. And we just need to blacken it a bit. Not too much. That's too much. Magenta. We don't want much, that's why I'm making just a little pile. More blue. That black overpowers, you see. So I hadn't already mixed enough paint to start with. Do we want that? Yeah, that's fine. Like a darker purple. And then we're just going to go in here and just very, very lightly create a little bit of shadow in that red. Like that. Okay, just a little bit and just a bit up here because that also helps to create um, a little bit of realism. Although we're having fun and it's completely abstract and all over the place, we do actually still want it to look like a parrot. <clears throat> I'm just going over the beak with that, kind of trying to bring it together a little bit. What I'm going to do is do the highlight for the top of the beak, which is here. And it doesn't have to be too much, just a little bit there. Do a bit of the blue so that there are some highlights on the bottom of the beak. It makes it look real more real again it's not just like one perfect color all right so now you can start to see that i am kind of doing my own thing need another bit of color here a bit of darker blue would be best just a little bit just to give that a little a little bit of oomph and then down here as well we'll just what all i'm doing now is just wiggling that slightly lighter color in so it's not just pure black down there Okay, so now I think I want some red with a little bit of black. Remember, just put dot in. So I just want a deep, dark red. That's it. And for that, I want to kind of just come in here and go over some of the red to give it... <clears throat> Um, just a bit of depth as you can see that's automatically started to kind of bring it to life a little bit and come around the eyes and the hair a little bit definitely up here and flick it in that's good and then what we want to do also is kind of flick some of it in here so that's creating a bit of shadow And coming up and around here. I mean, the face is this part here is where we want to make sure we're getting it exactly how we want it. We can leave, kind of leave the wing as it is because that is not the priority. Um, really, it's the face. So we want to be making sure that's the bit we're happy with. Get some more of that colour. Come in here, come along a bit, that's nice, that's really helped. There's a little patch here of red, so we can pop that in and pop a little bit in here as well. And also with that red we can just come up here to make it realistic, um, more realistic. Um, just add some of that as though it's mixing in the reds mixing in with that green remember it's very colorful very abstract it's not we're not trying to go for realism here but there's no harm in getting a bit of reality in there we need it to look like the parrot so i keep looking back now stepping back thinking where do i need more color so that's all i'm doing now where do i want color what color do i want And 
because we put most of our darker colours down, I'm thinking more in terms of highlights now, which will really help to finish it off. As you can see there, just coming in with some even lighter green. Right, I'm going to squiggle some green in elsewhere now. Whilst we've got it on our brush, let's get some over here. Um, yeah, we haven't kind of finished off the back there yet, have we? I wanted to focus on the face first. Um, and I'm just kind of going to come in and bring some of those other colours just into the other areas there <clears throat> at the back. Um, just want to finish this back bit off here. Kind of just needs to be like this feather's coming out. So just kind of going in that direction. Don't think we need to worry about it too much. I always aim for my tutorials to be about an hour. Um, not much more. Um, sorry, not an hour, an hour and a half, maximum two hours because that's uh, long enough to have to concentrate for. Okay, I'm coming in with some of the darker blue now, just the cyan as it is on its own, because I think I just want to create just a little bit more darkness down here. It's like the light's hitting the back of it, but so we can leave that light, but then come in and create some darkness, some shadow. Just put some darker there. That's dark anyway, isn't it? Underneath. Yeah, and so now I'm just kind of uh, playing. <laughs> um, it's kind of what I do at this stage. I just kind of like to play and just see what I can do, see what I like, see if there's anything I want to change. Because don't forget, if you make a mistake, you can come back and change it at any point. I might even just put that dark bit there at the corner. That really helps to highlight it. I did say I was going to come back, didn't I, and do some white, pure white on here. Oh, that's not pure white. That's got blue in it. It's all right, though. Might have to just squeeze a little bit. I'm trying to, because I've mixed with so much of it. There we are. We want that to be white as much as possible in that kind of middle bit because that's where the light will be hitting there and we can just streak it in to the rest as well just pushing it up and down without too much white on your brush uh right now pure pure white highlights here just adding them in where i feel i want them I do like to keep adding white highlights at the end until I'm happy that it's feeling an essence of, of 3D-ness, you know. I just, over here at the front, I think I'd quite like a few pure white. That's not going to be pure white. Should get some more white out. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. there we go and actually um, I want to add some white in here we need to go back over the eye because that really helps but coming in here in this area because we've got that kind of nice grey lilac colour there we can add some white now and that will really help to lift it so coming in with that white, we've still got the shadow underneath, which is lovely, but we can now come in and really lighten that area. And again, that helps to create, just squiggle it in. Yeah, it helps to create the 3D-ness. I'm gonna do the same with the white here. Just splodge on a bit more. Yeah, and I think I might actually just come in and put a white bit there as well at the bottom. Um, <clears throat> we do need a little bit of a highlight just coming here 
that helps. Um, and I feel like we need to do something than just black inside the mouth, but I don't want to ruin it. So let's just go for, yeah, just that kind of darker colour in there on top of the black. And then it doesn't feel quite so harsh. It's feeling a bit harsh to me. So that's better. Right. Now what I want to do, I think, is come in to the green and kind of just splodge some green around in different places because I can. <laughs> um, and it kind of brings it together if you've got colours in the bird everywhere, which is why we had the slightly green feather markings as well. We can kind of go over them now and bring that to life a bit. Um, I think I want some more of the red with a bit of the black that came out really nice, that deep red. So kind of want to go over the purple a bit with that, that looks better and it brings it together a bit. If you have like a random colour that you haven't used anywhere else in the painting, it won't feel right. literally just having fun now because it's pretty much at the point where we could say it was finished now but me being me i'm enjoying it so much i don't want to stop so you can stop here or keep keep going along with me as well adding bits of detail what i will say is just make sure you stop at a point where <laughs> you're not going to be um ruining it because that's uh easy done as well you can overwork a piece but i think we're doing okay i think we're doing okay i need a little bit more of this color i do like this kind of darky blue we made and I feel as though I just want to squiggle it in. So I'm literally just tickling, tickling the brush here and just squiggling in a slightly darker colour here. Okay, that makes a difference and makes it a bit more. Can you see how I'm just tickling it? That's all it needs. Just tickling in this other colour, flicking it in. And that's helped to create... Um, a bit of depth again as well i do love just doing scribbles once we've done a painting <laughs> do all that hard work and then we just go scribble scribble but that's the point of doing all that hard work we've got the basics there that we can then come in on and really play around with just thinking a little bit of shadow there I might even just put a bit there a little bit there. That needs to be lighter more than anything. It's just, it's better. And a bit here. We needed to put the darker colours down with first so that we could then come in and create all these amazing um, colours after. I'm just coming in with a, a light layer of the white, almost like a watery colour. Um, just to bring a bit of light to some of the other areas not too much see that's just created a line i don't want that and then we can also just dot dot bits of white in here and there like that wherever you want to put it anywhere where there might be a highlight can you see it's just nice so I'll just put a little bit up here because I can and then we will start to create some actual splashes okay let me just go get a straw
So you can create splashes just by tapping your brush. So we'll do that first. But if we want bigger splashes, I'll show you how to make those using the um, straw. So what we need is the biggest round brush that we have. So that one, we're going to get the brush really wet, like dripping wet. I want to choose a colour. So I'm thinking blue to start with because there's lots of blue in it. And then you can see here we're almost adding so much water it becomes watercolour then we just get another brush any brush doesn't matter because we're just going to use it to tap from see now you get lots of little because it's a little brush you get so lots of lovely little splashes but if we want big splashes let's see if i can get it to work we'll just put a blob there and then blow and that creates a lovely little splash effect do another one here make sure we've got enough paint okay and over here and just blow <laughs> um so it's a really nice effect um i think we'll go for some of the red we'll do some red splashes Make sure it's watery enough because we don't just want a big blob of paint there. I want it especially red because it's so fiery. Okay. Let's do one there. It's quite a nice big one there. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, I do love them. Right, let's just now splatter a bit. Okay, we'll get some splatters coming over the top in the red. We'll get some red ones here too. And down here. But please just have fun with this. Please do, if you haven't already, subscribe, um, like, comment, share. Look on the link below. You can get the free traceable downloaded as soon as I've loaded it. <laughs> and um, you can paint away at home. Let's do another splash down here. I think I'm gonna go for a red one. Let's make sure it's nice and watery. And just put a little blob there. Let's do this. <laughs> Might do it again from the same place. That's a great splash, okay. We'll do a blue one as well down there. And then we can stop. I'd say that would be enough. Well, it's gone on to the beak a bit, that, hasn't it? We don't want that. Just wipe it off. It's just water. It's mainly water, so it's fine. Let's do it again with the blue. It's my fault because I kind of blew it in the direction of the beak, which is silly. There we go. <laughs> it's in the other direction now perfect right let's splash on some other colors gonna try and water up the magenta let's get some magenta there there's not a lot of the magenta in the picture now but i think it'll look nice splashed maybe some yellow yeah we could do yellow in a minute let's do some yellow Lots of water, remember. And we'll go for a bit here. There's not much there. <laughs> and maybe another one here. Don't go on the beak. Oh, it only did one little splash. And then we must stop. I think that'll be enough splashes. Lovely okay now because we've got all those splashes on there and i kind of want to keep the splashes there we need to give it a dry
as you can see i was still kind of added things on even though i was drying because when i took that final step back i was a little bit like oh i just need a little bit more in there and you know i just i could feel i could sense that i needed um some different things added and it was particularly here because i think the fact that his hair goes that way a little bit is quite fun so i'm just going to add that in more accented more accentuated rather and then i think we kind of lost a little bit of the blue here which is fine i'm not going to go too mad because i love what i've done and i don't want to ruin it i added a bit more blue in here because i felt it was too green it needed to be more blue to fit in with everything else um and i think that's it really i think i added a few more little white highlights i don't think we need any more i think what we maybe need is a few more bits of yellow like this is a really lovely fiery area but i don't feel it's yellow enough so i'm just going to try and add a few yellowy blobs in and yellow it up a bit more than it is but i just love it as it is so i don't want to ruin it but it does need a bit more yellow just smudge it in because yellow is transparent we can just smudge it in a bit over everything and that's better okay i'm done i'm done it's done calling it done <laughs> have a good day everybody